storytelling with watches. Pretty crazy thing. That's what you opened with yeah. when we sat down in the coffee shop. I hadn't even written the short story at that point. No, you had written chapter one and we're working on chapter two. That yeah. is correct. The first time you came to me, you said, I want a square box. I want to be able to mass produce it quickly and efficiently. I'm not really looking for anything fancy. And then we discussed the drawings based on your stories. Yeah. And I brought that first box to you and I made it out of foam core. Yeah. It's really for quick and dirty models. Yeah. We did it a lot at Disney when right. I was an Imagineer. But you, this is something you could put in my hand. I put it in your hand and, and you like... were like Daryl Hannah on Splash. You were like <laughs> kissing and holding and petting it. And to me that was really unusual and strange. But then I realized that this was the first tangible, touchable, three-dimensional thing that was yours that you actually began to see. Right come to life and I think the fascinating thing was then after you left that square plane I'm mm -hmm. not that interested in any unique shape box became this next now here was the box right where you said oh well we can put like illustrations into the panels and I thought okay well why can't we also make the boxes themselves like form the illuminarium it's it's one of the, the centerpieces of the, of the short story um, and that's where you blew me away a second time and I believe it was from a suggestion from your husband. Mm -hmm. So the backs of these boxes now become kind of a time portal that allows the characters or shows the characters moving from one scene to another. Mm -hmm. That's well, one of the things so. that we that I talk about as an Imagineer is that one of the shortcomings of many Disney artists who recreate sculptures for the collector to collect is they get literal. Yeah. And the problem with getting literal is that. In Disneyland, it's a ride, it's an attraction. You are riding in a dark ride, mm -hmm. and so the things that they need to focus on is pretty much like theater versus ride in your hand. Right. So whenever I would create something that was a collectible for the company and for the collectors, I would take some license because I would make it more elaborate, I would make it more interesting, I would merely enhance what it was. So, yeah. And this box is based on your characters, and we decided to put the hero and the heroine and the villain which is, you know, simple storytelling, but very effective. And we got to the back of the box, where the back of the box became a problem because it's so vertical and it's so narrow. Right. So we're both thinking, you were thinking more horizontal like designs. or something. And I'm sitting here saying, I've got to have something that's vertical. And my husband just, he, he does some beautiful photography. Mm -hmm. And he came home and he showed me one piece and I, I saw it and it was this arch, which allowed me to trigger in the yep. mind. The but, but it's more than one arch, it's several arches that are like exactly. positioned behind it's perspective. one another. Yeah. And so you've done perspective in, I mean, how thick are the walls on this Only box? a quarter of an inch. You can yeah. kind of see up here where and they're, yet, where I mean, they're look a quarter at how of an deep inch. this looks. Yeah. yeah. My mold maker said, you got a little thin there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what you do. And then you have to be kind of careful because as you were saying before, yeah. he also wanted something on the inside and we decided on this wallpaper pattern which comes that's right. from the era of your heroine. Yeah. You were also, I think, unique in an artist in that you could take something like uh, a, a three 3D printed model of what this thing was going to be and then add your own imprint to it mm -hmm. um, which was really a special um, working relationship with you and, and I just I treasure that I'll never forget it the rest yeah, of my life me as well and collaborating is what yeah. I love and this is one of the things I, I like to speak about is yeah. that what makes Imagineers so special is the fact that we are automatic collaborators. We yeah. realize the benefit of teamwork. Yeah. And so when you and I got together and we were bouncing back and forth, that was the joy of it. Yeah. So these all come from, there's six different watches, mm -hmm. very much involved in your story, and the story is about time travel. Right. And about your hero and your heroine, yeah. and a villain whose main mission is to collect all the watches so yeah, that I he mean, can change. Yeah, I mean, in the change. story, he actually invented all of the watches. Mm -hmm. And it's this uh, Jeff and Alessandra character, the man and woman, who are separated by 80 years of age between them. It's them coming together using the power of the watches. And really, they only thought there was one watch in existence at the beginning of the story. And by the end of it, they find that there's all six. The scientist, Hinky, uh, who's like kind of our arch nemesis character, what he wants to do is to bring them back together, all six watches, because when he does that and he spins them in a circle, something called the Illuminarium, that's when he can not only offer the powers to himself or the person holding the watch, but everybody that's around him. 
Um, so this aluminarium idea that we've illustrated into the boxes that plug together into this circle is what the evil character is trying to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's and, and here we have on the box we decided that that would what we would do is we would show yeah. the evil um, hinky here and for the steampunk movement because they love something that is old world with new technology. That's, that's right. your watch. That's yeah. your pocket watch right there. That's what it is. Hinky has created a taser, turn of the century taser from his hat box and he tases the people in order to get the watch. If you have a watch, he's coming at you with the that's right. taser. Yep. And uh, your hero and heroine run from him at first and then they realize they can't be running from him. They have to yep. run. Right. They have to get they have to run involved back in, with the, in the direction yeah. of gunshots, basically. Exactly. Yeah. And, exactly. And, and summon enough courage within the two of them to like be able to confront him and get the watches back. Exactly. Yeah. So this is our dark box and our dark watch, right. the famed Inception watch, which is the watch that he wants more than anything because it is the final watch once That's he's. Right collected all the others, this one is activated. That's right. So the one you were caressing is probably one of the most popular because it's called the Rewind Watch. And this means that if you have a day, a minute, or an hour, or even a part in your life that you'd like to do over, you simply allow this watch to take you to that time and you get to relive that moment the way you want to change right. it, which is which yeah. has become very... Who, who I, I heard somebody say, I need that watch. right now. Yeah. Give me that watch. Yeah. So a lot of people were like, give me that watch. Yeah. And then here you were talking about this one. Yeah, this is the the this is the what if watch, mm -hmm. and this is allow, allowing you to take a look at the decisions that are coming up in your life. Maybe there are, it'll show you three decision points, and it lets you decide which one would most benefit your own lifetime. So who wouldn't want that kind of watch? Mm -hmm. And then this guy is the translate watch. Um, in the short story, the characters are like moving through time, and they encounter. People are speaking ancient languages, and so this watch allows them to do the, uh, uh, the the translation into the language that they that they speak. And this one also shows off the uh, the touch mechanism. So if I just tap on the back here, um, that turns it on. Um, and then after a couple of minutes of just it sitting around, it'll turn itself off. Inside each one of these watches is, um, are two batteries, one for the watch movement. Yes, it actually is a quartz watch. Yes, I, yes. We don't seem to talk about the fact that it keeps time. Yes. We always forget that part. It's a time travel watch, and yes, hello, really does keep time. Yes, exactly. <laughs> we even have people ask us, so it's go, a watch does it, as well, right? Does, does yeah. it really work as a watch? Yeah. We're like, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh -huh. sorry, we missed that yeah. part. And then there's an, a second battery inside here that uh, powers up the lights, so uh, the Chilovian lights. So, uh, both of those are replaceable by mere mortals. So, and these are highly collectible because this is our first endeavor. Right. We're not a big company. We're no. two artists that just got together and decided to do something cool. And we've limited these to how many, Frank? Well, we're only making a thousand of these. And I think it really does show a great example of when you're left to your cre creativity, when you collaborate with someone that you care about or someone that is like-minded. Yeah. Great things can come from it, like this, yeah. this new watch.